Okay. Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 11th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority in New Delhi as part of the ongoing Azadi Kamrit Mahatsa. This Mahatsa is a 75 week long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. The Central Zoo Authority is taking this celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign to coexistence, the people connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 priori conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 11 of the Mahatsa, with the king cobra as the species in focus and the, and the Pelicola Biological Park as the zoo in focus. Joined in today with us to speak to us on the species is Mr. Gauri Shankar. So Mr. Gauri Shankar is a wildlife biologist and has studied king cobra for around two decades and has featured in several wildlife documentaries, namely Asia's Deadliest Snakes, Secrets of King Cobra, among the more famous ones and then which have been hosted on uh, numerous channels such as the National Geographic, BBC, Dig Discovery, etc. He's the founder director of the Kalinga Center for Rainforest Ecology and the Kalinga Foundation, which is an environment education center and NGO which focuses on an, which focuses on ecological research and conservation. He is currently pursuing his doctorate from the North Orissa University and is a TEDx speaker, apart from being a TEDx 2020 fellow. I would now request Mr. Gauri Shankar to please begin his talk, which will be on the natural history of the King Cobra. Thank you, thank you, Dutti, and uh, it's a pleasure to do this talk on Caesar Day. So, shall I? My presentation. Wait. Okay. Do you see my presentation? Not yet, sir. But I think you're. It's it's starting. This screen share. Is starting. Yes, now I can see it. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I'm I, I'm I'm Agumbe. I live right here. On the internet at our station. Now it started raining. Uh, I hope I will be able to do this program and the internet also hold on until I finish this. Is it is it audible, uh, Arundhati? Everything is okay. Yes, everything is perfect. There's a bit of noise from the sheet. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, so across the world, we have close to 10,000 over 10,000 and in among them, 3,500 are snakes. That's a huge People can't believe that there are 3,500 species of snakes across the globe. In that, 10% that is already in India. So that's a large number compared to any other place. And the first thing you ask me whenever we talk about uh, what is the use, what, what is the purpose of snake being on this uh, land or ecosystem? I say they play a very important role in the ecosystem, both as predator and prey. But in the day, people want to know what is useful to them. I would say snake venom is one of the most traditionally useful in uh, synthesizing various drugs. And of course, if, if we all know, the anti-venom is produced from the venom. So snakes are really important in because we have to survive. And we have to take care of our snakes. And our snakes. So, we also see them hundreds of snakes, thousands of snakes. I would say, uh, so they have severe threats. Except, you know, South, South and Southeast Asia snakes are just like any other chicken, fish, or a duck. you know, they eat them. So, exotic also kills is the major problem for snakes. And fashion industry, of course, they use their skin and uh, pay trade. Multi million dollar industry is paid for cobra is, uh, or snakes, particularly the cobras in South Africa and South America. Snakes are in demand for Europe and America. 
So, of course, deforestation is also one of the major uh, threats for snakes. And a uh, few uh, statistics. Um, millions of people get bitten by snakes every year, particularly in South and Southeast Asia. There's some issue. Screening. Sorry, can you? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, close to 1.8 to 2.7 million people develop clinical illness. Among them, 81,000 to 138,000 people die every year across the globe. Right? This is a huge problem. But the decision makers, our government, everybody is ignoring this problem. So, according to WHO, snake bite is a neglected tropical disease. So, if you see among this one point eight to two point million uh, snake bites, four hundred thousand surviving victims. When I say people who survive the bite, they go to the hospital, they get the treatment. Some of them survive; they don't die. They develop permanent physical and psychological disabilities. Just imagine when a person, a breadwinner, gets bitten by a rubber crate and loses his arm or a limb. He's not, he will never be able to go back and work as a farmer or any other profession. So India as such has 58,000 deaths per year. That is about 60% of the world's snake bite deaths India contributes. So that's a really sad uh, 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 thing happening. But the, uh, the statistics says one in every 240 Indian are at risk of dying by snake bite before the age of 70. So that's the number we are talking about. So there's no way we can ignore snakes as such or a snake bite. And uh, like I mentioned, out of 300 species, just 30 to 40, 40 are venomous in India. Among them, four are medically important snakes. These we have to remember. Yes, king cobras. I'll be talking about king cobras in my following uh, slides, but we need to understand these global issues. At the same time, what are the other snakes which are causing more problems here? So, spectacle cobra, russells, common crate, and sawskill viper. These are the four medically important snakes which cause 58 to 60,000 60, snake bites in a year. So, and we have only one anti venom. I'm, again, I'm uh, bringing audience the attention here. Snakes are important in case if we need to manufacture antivenom to protect yourself from the snake bite, we need snakes. But so who are all the affected people? Everybody knows the, the agriculturist, the uh, fisherman, labor class, people working in the field. So 70% of our population is, they fall into this category. So these are the people who are affected by snake bite. So main, issue, limited access to education and healthcare. So WHO has uh, decided to focus on four different aspects. That is the building capacity for treatment. That is the hospitals and uh, uh, hospitals, medical uh, care can be taken care of. And, uh, um, and of course, the strengthening diagnostic tests and tools, which I'll be talking about in my following uh, slides and definitely raise awareness of snake bite and rehabilitation and uh, provide early access to the safe, affordable and effective antivenoms. So, I can't move it, please excuse me. Yes. Now, so yes, these are the major snakes we have in India, but King Cobra gets attention to India, particularly the Western Ghats. So right now, it's, I can call this as a success story because uh, this is the only species which has been studied properly or well documented in Indian snakes, I would say, in Indian herpetological history. So Ophiphagus hana is the only species or only genus, uh, only species in that genus as of now. And uh, Cobra is the longest venom snake in the world. They can grow up to 18 feet, that's almost five meters. The one which was recorded in Thailand and that part is 18 feet. In India, they grow up to 15 feet. And this is the largest I have ever caught. This guy was close to 15 feet and he weighed 10 kilos. 
on an average king cobras are like three kilos six kilos or five kilos maximum will be eight but this guy was 10 kilos so that's a huge huge guy and we have such huge specimens right here in our western guards and uh, yes there is sexual dimorphism when i say sexual dimorphism males and female they look different males usually are olive brown or olive green complete about three-fourth of the body and uh, tail is jet black females are either completely black or completely brown so they don't have these dual colors and their um, bands are more prominent uh, towards the tail all the way towards the tail you will see the bands but with uh, males towards the tail the jet back black tail the bands disappear so that's a big difference between males and females and males are huge usually large females are small compared to uh, the male but so king cobra again like i said very interesting species we would call them as an intelligent species also some of the people like us who worked with them closely we would definitely put king cobra on a different uh, status they're smart and intelligent compared to a cobra or a russell viper or a rat snake you know so one of the interesting things they do is a male combat to win their female i hope this video plays yeah you go so usually if there is a female there's always competition there's one guy watching the female if there is a competitor then definitely they both have to settle uh, the dispute by fighting or doing a male combat when i say male combat they just try to press each other's head towards the ground it's like like kind of a wrestling no no biting allowed and they don't literally kill each other it's basically just physical fitness and showing their stamina their strength but no venom is so after the fight it might last anywhere between 40 60 minutes sometimes almost 120 minutes uh, so whichever wins get to mate with the female that winner will go to the female and communicate with the female and say oh, look I said, but no I he will go back to the female and uh, like i said he'll communicate this is kind of tonguing trying to check whether the female is receptive and she will be interested in mating with him because both keep in mind king cobras are cannibalistic they eat snakes in general they eat uh, monitor lizards on occasionally but they can eat species so they're cannibalistic the female she doesn't like it kill the male and eat him so he should be very careful to the female and smaller and she's not just male so she has to communicate the female to him properly right otherwise there will be a confusion that's quite an interesting behavior when we see the most jealous in the world and with each other so gently next one so next after the mating very interesting out of 3500 species of snakes king cobra is the only snake which builds a nest you know what we will see how interestingly gather Oiled. Leaf all the way to two meters, simulate way up to 60, 20 length, almost works the amount of work. And she does it day from morning to evening, about 30 to 40 days. Pay the nest, no food, no work. That's the uh, mother, the eggs get. And of course, opportunistically, if there's a rat snake or a bronze back tree snake passing by close to the nest, she will grab it, grab that uh, snake and eat. 
If not, nothing. She will just stay on the nest and hold on to onto the nest and the mongoose, right? So these are predators for the nest. So she has to stay there until they are safe. And then the female will leave. So that's the kind of dedication a female king has to go. The next, yes, it depends on the temperature and humidity. You see on the left side, that's how inside the nest. People might ask, how did you get the shot? This was a disturbed nest. People here, you know, they open up the nest and they find these eggs. Then they call us and I go there and check the eggs. And once the nest is opened, there's no way the man can put the leaf litter back and build a proper nest the way she builds. You know, for 60 to 80 days, 3,000 to 8,000 mm of rainfall sometimes in the parts of our Western Ghats, not even a single drop of water will reach the nest chamber. So that's the nest she builds. So once the human disturbs the nest, is no you can. The only bring the eggs, keep them in captivity under uh, under your supervision in a otherwise in the nature anywhere 60 to 70 days they they do remain to 50 days they shed first and then they take off they they just disappear leave nesting and I deal with them uh, as you deal with a, an adult uh, sir, sorry to interrupt. Uh, king cobra. So there's no way you can take advantage. In so yeah, I'd request, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt in between, but I request you if you can close, yes. uh, you can turn off your video and then give the presentation. There's a bit of a disturbance in between, like the voice is going, I think the bandwidth is higher. Yeah. So I, I just suggest that if you can Turn off your video and continue with the presentation. Uh, sure, sure. Where is that? Uh, stop video. Yeah, is the stop my video. video is gone. The bottom of the video is gone, sir. You can put it back on the screen, uh, the full screen mode, and continue with the talk. Is this okay? Hello? It's can you, fine, can you hear? Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Please proceed, so, sir. That, yeah, that's that's the uh, drawback being a place like this in Anbe. Yeah. And I'll continue. So we will look project the first project ever on anywhere in the world. So we started radio telemetry Nate. So some of the data what I'm here with from two thousand eight years of uh, work. So one of the things we started doing is down in Agumbe is giving people a rescue facility. Like any other city you have Cobras and Russell have been rescued. King Cobras are revered in Western people. Do. So, King Cobra is for the way us to help them in rescuing and relocating them. So, just to the audience to show you what a rescue is actually. This is on a main road, very close to human habitation. Look at the number of people. So it's a tough situation, not with the snake, but with the people around. They're very curious. They want to see the king cobra catch, and they also want to see whether I get bitten or not get bitten. You know, uh, so of them are stunts. You know, all these keeps people place. You know, sometimes. So this is an actual uh, rescue. Uh, 
and that's Prashant. Uh, this is how we rescue sometimes. A bagger and a bag. Uh, rescue is also very important conservation. I would say this is a direct conservation. There's a snake, or they don't kill it, or rescue and relocate. Lucky here, we don't kill it. We have an opportunity to capture and relocate them or release them back into the wild. So, in other places, I can say, even in Guatemala, goblins are killed mercilessly. So, it's not a good yeah, but here in, in, in Malnad region, like so, some of the shots in I would say, you see, left side there's a king cobra, and there was a king cobra in my have, and look uh, at this so 88. 0.68% is in human habitation. Of course, we capture them only if they are inside or outside. Uh, uh, vegetation snakes. This is like a uh, like talking to that. Most of the captures are in and around houses. That's what I I mean to show in this slide. And look at this. Look at this slide on the right side. It is completely uh, destroyed or deforested uh, landscape. On the left side, we have Ogumbe Reserve Forest that is intact, but our uh, human conflict is all over on the right side, which forms the paddy fields, areca plantation, coconut plantation, and of course, human settlements. You know, So this is a huge problem. And uh, luckily, like I mentioned here, in this part, only 14% of the cases were inclined kill the snake and the 86 percentage of the people will never kill unlike other places and now the interesting point uh, the project the radio telemetry i was talking about the uh sorry uh, arundhati can you hear me uh, is it clear because uh, i'm yeah, getting now. messages saying that yeah yes clear? it was a bit distorted earlier but now it's clear oh okay uh, because yeah. uh, my team members are reading the messages here saying that the voice is distorted. Anyway, now I think it's pretty clear. Now it's clear. I hope yes. it'll be now okay. Yes. Good. Thanks. So the radio telemetry is one of the pioneering projects started by Rom Vitaker, and I was part of it. And my friends in um, Thailand, that is Colin on the left side, where he, uh, where, uh, he is uh, tracking close to 60 Viking Cobras, and of course now very less. Uh, very interesting information. But get radio telemetry and of well, let's see what the scope and then using devices. Uh, our engine is still following um, and, and me tracking over. The monsoon. So one interesting factor I would like to mention here: the result of uh, the radio telemetry, which uh, uh, which was quite a surprising thing to know. A king cobra can travel up to the face people that he was captured in one point and released in another point, quite far away from his home range. Our point was here across the globe, particularly in India, thousands of snakes are rescued every year, right? What happens to these snakes when they're captured from the cities and release them in the wild? Or sometimes they're captured uh, in, uh, in the wild, they survive. How do they cope up with the new habitat, uh, new surroundings, you know? So this is what our uh, uh, objective was. And we managed to find out, you see the black, the mark belongs to the M1, which was translocated right like far away like 15 kilometers away from his home and he was lost so my suggestion my advice to the all the snake rescuers or people who are listening uh never take the snake beyond three to four square kilometers that's i'm talking about your brussels viper or cobra or crate or other snakes rat snakes nobody is a king cobra please release them within five square kilometers so beyond that these guys get lost so they try to go back to their uh, natural their home but they can't find figure out and they move a lot so that is what you see 83 
kilometers. That's a long distance. Compared to M2 and M, uh, they are captured and released within their home range. So they never went beyond their they would go round and round. They have their all the rescuers, if you're listening, if there is a snake which is rescued, please try to release them their home range. Two to three, five kilometers. So, Next and important project, unless the old to films are species are one species. For example, according to the IUCN uh, criteria, king cobras are not given much attention. It's not the so They think it's a widely distributed species. A lot of uh, habitat, a lot of king cobras. That's what and speech was in or Borneo or Bali species. So, my point was to find out the genetic morphological. We have conclude this point. And my papers are coming up uh, very soon. Do larger uh, study. We need to see the attention of Western guards are enemies. Then the. Game changer, very own uh, results come up. And cobras, but along with friends and colleagues in ISC, we are looking at designing. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, cleaning next generation anti venom they have right now is produced venom, which is ex uh, milk. In one part of country, or anywhere else. There are papers now where antivenom efficacy is very, very less efficacy. So it's important to have species-specific, region-specific, I mean, geography, location-specific antivenom. Does it work on seasters or maybe in the Philippines or uh, Borneo? No. So we need to know the, their uh, morphological or genetic variation and the venom variation and try to find or produce species specific region specific antivenom and definitely it should be affordable right any bite case any bite uh, treatment can cost you 80000 to 150000 rupees per uh, bite so that's a heavy uh, big amount for a farmer or a, a middle class This is on so many other NGOs working and engaging and educating communities. And uh, of course, training is also very important. Train forest officials for a or even the fire department done because we all get and solve the human snake conflict. That's the only solutions. 
that's all I kind of here. I uh, try to give about snake, snake but globally as well. Yeah, and the four venomous snakes, which are really important in India, and the education and training. That's the only way I hit to deal with this uh, neglect this is the snake bite thank you but i am afraid that due to sound you know certain i even not able to hear you audibly for the last couple of minutes and in between so i request after the zoom is so to two minutes you know, for conservation without the presentation so you know we can the audience can just get a brief overview because i think due to the rains and other issues there may be a problem with the bandwidth so once we're done with the zoo component i would request you to just give two minutes of your time and you know speak on the king cobra conservation and you know the the research that you have done so far because we missed you out on that all right sir and uh, now we move on to the zoo component which is on the uh, which is on the pellicula biological park to speak on the zoo we have mr jay prakash bhandari who is so the director you want me, of pellicula you want me to hold on here yes so a uh, brief introduction of mr bhandari he has served in the karnataka forest department in various capacity for the years for his various service in wildlife protection by the government of karnataka he has helped animal welfare and management within the zoo and has elevated it to the category of a large zoo in a very short period of time he speaks to us he will speak to us today on the history vision and accomplishments of the zoo and over to you sir to please begin your presentation Okay. 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 Good morning to all. Can you hear me? Yes, I am audible. So please start sharing your screen. Yeah. I'd like to share some important things regarding the establishment of our zoo and also its functioning. There's uh, actually almost all the zoos of India are run by state government or city corporations or some other corporate bodies. But our zoo, run by a registered society called Pinnacle Nisarga Dhamma Society. But actually, we don't have any financial assistance from the government. We have to run the zoo by our own. We have here three tier of administrative system. That is one administrative committee and and next governing council and the general in administrative committee it's a day to day day to day affairs are managed that um, governing council will take decisions administrative decision and general committee consists of uh, district judge ministers and other MPs, MLAs are once in a year to move around. Once in a year they join. But for governing council, district in so our uh, deputy commissioner, it's a collector, is the chairman, and uh, some officers of uh, district level are members of the committee. Then this uh, 
financial help you get from others then brief history i'll tell you that name pelikula derived from local tulu language we, are, we speak tulu language pili means tiger and kula means pond it is said that in the past years tigers were extensively found in this locality this tigers used to drink water from a small pond in the area hence the name came pelikula the natural tiger caves are still exist in the locality we are in the zoo we are uh, maintaining it now the small pond was excavated to form a lake it extends about 10 acres earlier uh, it was about uh, half an acre there were nearly 120 encroachments were there they were removed and now we have ample of water in the lake is about uh, 20 to 30 feet and also we are uh, every year we are releasing nearly 50000s of fish lakes in the variety of fish in the lake and now lakhs of fish fishes are there in the but the and as i said the pelicula zoo is the only large zoo in the country managed by a registered society it's called the pelicula nisarga dambar society now state government has passed a bill to convert pelicula society to pelicula developer development authority but uh, is yet to be implemented pelicula nisarga dama we are uh, working under pelicula nisarga dama is a major eco education and tourism development project promoted by the district administration of this dakshina kannada in the beautiful city of mangalore karnataka india its uh, extension of this uh, pelicula nisarga dama is about 500 acres due to the initiation of vanshi bharatlal mean ias the eden deputy commissioner the collector of dk he initiated this project pelicula probably the first project of its kind in india is inspired by the concept of providing host some experience of the native natural and uh, cultural heritage in this area we have a lot of other components is a major component is pelicula biological park and arboretum soil that is botanical garden of a endangered western ghat species of more than 120 species we have and regional science center and uh, planetarium the planetarium i think it is uh, one of the best uh, planetarium in india and in international standard and heritage and artisan village lake garden ayurvedic health therapy center water amusement park and golf course of uh, nine holes these are all the components so major component is pelicula biological park with the pelicula zoo 150 acres of wooded land is earmarked for the development of the zoo. At, it is uh, located at the foothills of Western Ghats, along with the bank of river Gurupur, a tributary of Netravat. We have got ample, ample of water here. Zoo declared open for the visitors during 2004, but actually, comparing to other zoos, we are still in infant stage. It is one of the best known zoos in the country, I have to say, to breed most of the endangered and other wild animals. Almost all animals in this zoo, all the species are breeding very well. At present, stock of captive wild animals in is nearly 1,300 individuals of 122 species of mammals, reptiles and birds. There are 512 endangered animals of 41 species. But another uh, thing is the staff strength of our zoo is bare minimum compared to other large zoos of country because we are running from money get from donation. That's the reason we are kept the staff strength is very low. You can call it as a low budget or low cost zoo. There is no government fund for the maintenance of the zoo. Vision of the zoo is to develop a zoo 
of international standards in the Western Ghats region for in situ and ex situ conservation of Western Ghats species. Mission is to promote the conservation of fauna and of Western Ghats region through education, scientific research, captive breeding, and establishment of rescue center. Broad taxonomical display of wild animals. That's a theme. Animal species of national importance with the special emphasis to own of Western Ghats. And we keep only in our uh, master plan, only 10% of uh, exotic animals are provision we have made just to attract the visitors. Off display conservation of breeding centers of King Cobra, most deer, Mulbar, King Spirit, and endangered species of other Western world. So, objective is showcase the rich fauna and flora of, of Western Ghats. It's one of the hotspots of uh, the world. Conservation of and breeding of endangered species found in Western Ghat region or for display, exchange, breeding loans, and rehabilitation to the wild in keeping with the national policy and guidelines from the from time to time. Promote awareness among the public in general and particularly with students on the need to protect and conserve the wildlife and its habitats. Encourage research and scientific studies useful for zoo and wildlife management. To function as a rescue center of wild animals posing danger to human and animal entering to human habitat orphaned and injured animals. Every month we are releasing about 100 uh, snakes, cobras and uh, other uh, venomous snakes in the wild where uh, human habitation is not there. Recreation for the purpose of providing wholesome, healthy education activity by utilizing the natural facility. There's some of the major contribution, as I said, we are uh, depending on contribution from public and uh, uh, institutions, CSR fund and gate collection. This, uh, we have this leopard enclosure, that a huge leopard enclosure she covers about uh, nearly two acres. This is sponsored by Kudra Mukayar North Company Limited. And it's a tiger enclosure. This is sponsored by New Mango Porters. It's a huge one. That's also two and a half acres of uh, land. It covers two and a half acres and with uh, full of uh, veg vegetation. And land enclosure. It's a joint sponsorship from various companies. It's also it's about uh, two and a half acres with uh, natural uh, trees we have grown inside. Swath bear enclosure, joint sponsorship of various companies. And uh, this snake house, we have got a uh, snake house. We have provided uh, ample of space inside in the individual uh, snake uh, cubicles. Unlike uh, most of the zoos have small uh, compartment. This is sponsored by Karnataka Urban Development and uh, Coastal Environment Management. It's got a put sell. The snake house expansion. This is one. This is by Karnataka Bank. They are sponsored. And uh, walk-in aviary sponsored by Tourism Department, Karnataka. Is the height is nearly 50 feet. And the aesthetic land enclosure is uh, this is sponsored by Indian Oil Corporation Limited. That uh, we are made in different uh, plan here just to avoid cutting of trees to uh, make this um, trench trench method uh, that we have to sacrifice a lot of trees so this time we have made with uh, glass and wall this from mp fund we have paved the entire visitors park and road of uh, for the benefit of visitors and movement of uh, vehicles. And uh, this one uh, person from Abu Dhabi, Dubai, has uh, sponsored uh, Tiger Animals 
this extension of tiger animal house. This is another uh, project from HBCL. And also we got uh, financial assistance from Central Zoo Authority. In the beginning for uh, animal health care, we have provided some point. In that we have constructed wildlife hospital, radiography unit, ultrasound, ultrasonography, and post treatment ward, and animal quarantine. These are all from the share from the Central Zoo Authority. And also, last time CZD has provided some fund in that we have constructed one lion tail macaque enclosure, a huge enclosure. And also, from the fund, we have installed 48 CCTV cameras to monitor distribution of feed and fodder and movement of the animals around the park. And also, our MRPL, MRPL, they have uh, has sanctioned about 30 lakhs of rupees in first phase to develop green belts in our area. And uh, second phase, they gave nearly 40 lakhs. More than 5,000 medicine, medicinal food yielding, rare and endangered Western Ghat plants have planted. And also we have raised the fodder class. That uh, now we are, uh, we need not depend on outside. Now we have our own uh, fodder, fodder for our uh, herbivores and This is a pellicula. We are thankful to uh, M MRPL because during our uh, lockdown time, they came to our assistance. Two years, uh, they have adopted entire animals. That uh, first year, they gave uh, 3.35 crores, and the second time, the last year, they gave 3 crores 53. Course. This amount is utilized for the upkeep of animals, the feeding, veterinary care, and staff salary. And regarding conservation of conservation building of King Cobra, that, that uh, Central Zoo Authority financed us during during eight and nine, two thousand eight and nine, and so we took the took up this. Uh, Breeding uh, captive breeding program. That's the facts of King Cobra. It's, a, it's as you, as everybody know, this King Cobra, longest venomous snake of the world. It is natural reptile of India. In India, it is found through the lowland of Terai region in western Himalayas to eastern Himalaya, to eastern Ghats to northern Andhra Pradesh to western Ghats. But uh, I found and I observed. That king cobra belong to western guards are uh, huge than other king cobras of uh, northern India. I think so, but I'm not uh, so sure. It is the only snake to build nest of leaf, leaf litter during breeding season. It is diet mainly consists of snake and lizards. But here we observe that uh, they don't eat uh, dead snake or dead uh, meat. They are fond of only live snakes. It's also especially rat snakes. That uh, Central Zoo Authority of India has financed Vilikla, the King Cobra during 8 time, during 2008 and 9. And uh, we have constructed the off display enclosure and cubicles and started the program by 2011. That uh, enclosures and cubicles, uh, the enclosure was enriched with the sufficient bamboo plants. But uh, here we notice that uh, king cobras are fond of these bamboo trees. You can find them under bamboo plantation. Water ponds, water sprinklers, pool spots. But uh, 75 roof area was covered with the shade net, and 25% roof area was kept open. As to provide sunlight and for basket. 
temperature and humidity of the enclosure was maintained 26 to 30 degrees celsius and 70 to 90 degree humidity but it is maintained by sprinkling, regular sprinkling of water we are provided with the sprinklers and whenever necessary we keep uh, fans and also regarding uh, king cobra we have to the king cobras are very majestic and also they are timid people by looking at they are scared because of its size and uh, thinking about its uh, quantity of venom but which is we are we observed here that it's very timid and very friendly also that uh, actually they can recognize the person who feeds it the selection and, and marking that uh, took up that uh, conservation breeding first uh, four females and six males were selected and transplanted with the uh, microchips for individual identification females were kept individual in separate cubicles and males kept together in the breeding area but uh, we have to isolate them before uh, breeding season and uh, Copulation takes place. Male king cobra started to show combat in the month of January. We have observed the month of January. They start uh, uh, fighting each other to dominate and suppress others. And one dominate uh, king cobra called Nagaraja successfully mated with all the females and the average copulation time was found to be 48 minutes. The females were released to the breeding area from the cubicle for mating uh, this, uh, during the month of March. Then that female were separated from the males after successful mating and were shifted back to the cubicles respectively. Females started to build the nest in the month of April and completed in a week. We keep uh, bamboo leaves, ample of bamboo leaf inside the cubicles. And actually, three females laid eggs with uh, clutches of uh, which varying from 18 to 43. Fourth female has built the nest, but eggs were not laid that uh, everything it has done but uh, eggs have not come out that the reason uh, to find out is that uh, Rani kept laid uh, 22 eggs Nagamani 80 Nagamani 43 we identify them with their names observation and marking of eggs immediately the eggs of Two king cobras were shifted to the lab for incubation <coughs> and eggs of the third female were left as such for incubation in its enclosure. But after one month, it was shifted to the lab to avoid fungal attack. It, usually the problem comes with the egg, the fungus attack and ant attack. So we shifted it to the laboratory. The weight of the eggs range from 80, 28 to 32 grams. Incubation of the eggs. Eggs were kept in a glass cabinet for uh, incubation and uh, was covered with uh, bamboo leaves. The temperature and humidity were maintained 27 to 30 degrees Celsius and 85 to 95 degrees. Then hatching, the egg started to hatch after the incubation of period of 87 days. And all the eggs were hatched within 48 hours. Eight, two eggs were successfully hatched. Only one, I think, one or two eggs were spoiled. Feeding. Initially, the hatchlings were hand fed since they refused to feed on. For for one month, they refuse to take food. And also, we have to hold it and uh, 
forcibly feed it. So the pro problem actually, even uh, juvenile king cobras also poisonous, can kill uh, the so venom is sufficient to kill three, four persons. But uh, another good thing is that they never bite. Well, but you use to have some uh, 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 instructed our staff to be careful and not not take for granted. After three months, young king cobra started eating their own. They are fed with the hatchlings of other snakes. But another thing we notice if we keep keep the neonates together, they start uh, eating each other. There's a cannibalism is common. So we separated them to uh, different uh, cabinets and different places. It's a, it was a cumbersome job. One is, uh, one is feeding and also separating it. We required a lot of spaces. And after, uh, then we release the king cobras to the wild after keep retaining some uh, 20 king cobras at the age of eight months. Cobras hatchlings were released in their natural habitat in near Putramukha, Someshwar, where the, uh, they are from different regions of Western Ghats. This is how we conducted uh, uh, King Cobra captive breeding. But another thing I would like to say that the breeding, natural breeding of King Cobra is common in the wild. That's very, that's very common in our region we observe. But captive breeding, I don't think some have, but some uh, have started uh, this research uh, in the wild that they can See it only after uh, being egg. From there it starts with the photography. But we have done from the beginning uh, stage, from when it uh, releases pheromone, uh, a special scent, when it's uh, ready for uh, this uh, mating. So step by step we have done. This year also we are trying to uh, do that. Now, Instantly, uh, last month we observed uh, one, one of our uh, king cobras laid uh, eggs, but it is a rare phenomena. But it has not uh, constructed uh, the nest. But uh, that our enclosure is full of uh, bamboo leaves. And but another, they used to lay egg in uh, uh, clutches. But this time they, it uh, uh, laid egg, three eggs one day, and after two days another one. Again, in the and uh, in the gap of two three days, uh, total total eight eggs they laid. But uh, we took it to the laboratory for incubation. Uh, there we find uh, three eggs are uh, unfertile, and remaining eggs are there. But uh, that phenomena we have to study why it is uh, that, that type of uh, phenomena is there. We'll, uh, and then uh, we have thank uh, Central Zoo Authority also for providing us uh, uh, opportunity to breed this pink cobras. Right. Thank you, sir, for the very enriching talk on the zoo as well as the facility. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fine. So, I am sir, there. I would request you if you could just sum, you could just sum up your talk in like in another two minutes. In two minutes, the just of it so that you know the audience i think most was lost most of it because of the network issue so if you could just sum up your talk sure i uh i still see uh, uh, mm, Bhandari, do you I mean, stop uh, sharing the screen yes
So, um, Arundhati, you want the presentation or no presentation? Uh, I've connected to the dongle, so I, I hope it will work. Just the so last I three think slides, right? Also. Sure, sure. Yeah, the last three slides, or, or if you can just give a gist of the entire talk, I think uh, the most of the viewers and we also lost most of it. If you could just give a gist of the entire thing and essentially the research bit that you have gone ahead with the king on the king cobra. Sure. So, uh, my apologies on the internet issue here, but yes, I was talking about uh, the pan India anti venom uh, uh, research and stuff like that. So, off late with my friends and my colleagues, Kartik Sunagar and uh, his team, and from IIC, they've been figuring it out, right? The anti venom, what we have, uh, the efficacy is very, very low, or sometimes it doesn't even work. So, along with King Cobras, we're talking about, I, I was talking about other venomous snakes as well, but uh, mainly I was focusing on king cobras. Uh, the one of the recent project I'm involved for my PhD is I was looking at their uh, genetic variation across their distribution from India all the way to Philippines. So like I mentioned initially, king cobra is monotypic genus that is only one species found in that particular genus. But my point was, my hypothesis was, how can they be one? There might be many other species or subspecies, at least in this entire uh, region, you know, because they're isolated. They're in some, if you see in Philippines and Borneo and Sumatra and Bali, some of the species are, uh, populations are found on the uh, islands. So there is very little genetic flow happening. So my hypothesis, they might be different uh, species. The other point is, I was mentioning, according to IUC and King Cobra is vulnerable. That is not much attention or protection is given because it's one species and has one of the largest distribution, right? So my point, in case if there are four or five different species, that means their population or their distribution will be restricted to smaller isolated populations or regions. For example, Western Ghats. There's a big gap between Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats population. So the Deccan Plateau separates them. What if the Western Ghats species is different? So then definitely it will be a isolated and endemic, just like our lion tail macaque or many other species. So my point is that, and that's what I'm the research I'm doing right now. So if we come out three to four different species or five species, then the status, IUCN status, the protection status in India, as well as globally, it has to change. So then uh, the more research geographically, the isolated population should be looked into. That's what I was talking about. And of course, uh, while doing research, I also try to reach out to many other people, communities, education programs, giving talks like this nationally and internationally, trying to get people across the globe under one roof to do more projects or more work on King Cobras. That's what's happening right now. That's it, uh, Arundhati. That's what I was talking about in my few last few slides. All right. Thank you so much, sir, for reiterating. You know the gist of the presentation, and we are now going to take questions. So the first set of questions are for you, and uh, the first question for you is that Agumbe is special because of its cultural relationship with the king cobra. What is your take on the conservation of the species in other parts of its range? Persecution of dominance. Yes, so the Agumbe, like I already mentioned, so one of the <clears throat> greatest advantage we have culturally, these people are very, very connected uh, and uh, they don't kill them. But other places, definitely they kill them. Yeah, so we try to do a lot of education programs, reaching out to local people, communities. And now I've, I've been training people to capture king cobras across India, you know, from Western Ghats to Northeast, even in Andaman. Islands have trained forest officials and uh, Coast Guard people to rescue and relocate snakes. So that's the only way. People are scared. Can you hear me? So, sir, follow. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. So, sir, for the uh, follow-up question is that uh, what what can government and civil society 
society organizations do to create awareness and prevent you know, the snake the snake bite deaths yes we have to involve every single uh, government official or person health department your forest department your uh, your rural uh, uh, self help group or women associations um everybody should be involved because this is a issue it's a grassroots issue you know like i mentioned uh, 60000 people dying every year is a big number of people we are losing yeah so everybody should be uh, involved medical uh, department and government should consider this as an issue so far to my knowledge no one has considered this as an issue they they they're ignoring it so they don't even know or they don't even think it is an issue that's a bigger problem we have so ignorance is a bigger problem we have so they need to take this call as early as possible and fix it right okay the fish is having a special ecology being a, like being a snake eater and a specialized breeding biology what role do you see zoos uh, that so zoos playing in exit to species exit to conservation of the species oh zoos can play a major role so we when we when we go and capture a king cobra just for 20 30 minutes we talk to people and try to educate them you know zoos they have snakes right there so they can do uh, the uh, outreach program throughout the year you know so that's one of the best example the zoos can be um uh used for outreach programs and what pelicula is doing even uh, banagata also was trying to breed them in captivity so that's quite an interesting project they're doing uh, in case if there is anything issues in the wild they can always replenish with their captive breeding pro programs you know so that's yes. it the zoos can play a major role in reaching out to people okay sir and the last question for you is that uh, that it is enlightening to know that if rescued if rescued the king cobra should ideally be released within its home range and the case with what about the snakes that are rescued from human habitation or uh, urban locations is it worthwhile to release them back, back at all yes see um to my knowledge 60 to 70% or at least 40 50% are rat snakes people have to understand rat snakes are like big fish or you know or cats and dogs they are living around you know they can help us a lot so convince them to be released within their property if it is cobras russells definitely we have to move them away from their house but if you see every town will have developing developmental pro projects like empty sites your parks your uh, uh, ponds and lakes these these places should be uh, the the release spots but it's a it's a uh, practical problem we have across the world people don't want them once they are caught in their houses they don't want them back in their habitat so we have to release them quite far away that's the only right, option right so you would not you would not you would you recommend okay yeah Sorry? that's our ask would you recommend releasing them back that's what i wanted to know whether it would be that's what the question was that whether you agree uh, would be you know reasonable to release them within the within the home range from far away that way so i think with that we don't have the questions options. for you sir now we right thank you thank you thank you yeah so now we move on to the next uh, set of questions for mr bhandari mr bhandari are you there yeah 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 so sir, yeah. the first question for you is that as a great institution what step did you uh, to the difficulties that were faced during the covid pandemic yeah yeah during covid uh, pandemic zoo was totally closed there's no visitors but uh, our staff have to work see what they have your visitors are there or not for so the maintain of the zoo so treatment everything goes well but the problem is the gate collection has gone down not uh, completely stopped now so we are uh, depending on other institutions right hello is it okay, a question so the next question for you what, what are the steps that you are employing to tide over the covid 19 
pandemic. Hi, sir. What are the, how are you? It's not uh, clear. The question is, how are you? What are, can you hear me now, sir? No, not clear. So once again, please. So the question was that what are the, the question was what are the steps that uh, the zoo has launched to uh, to cover up the COVID nineteen based difficulties? No, actually, problem is there, but uh, still, uh, that they have taken vaccination. We are uh, arranging for vaccination. And also, uh, regular check RT based is checking there and uh, cleanliness is maintained. And uh, whenever enter the enclosures, they have to uh, be hygienic. That all, uh, all as right. per government uh, regulations uh, follow. Fine. All right. So, next question for you. What is the cultural curricula to zoom in the wildlife rescue activities? Yeah, yeah, rescue activities you are doing. After rescuing, if it You're is doing, sir, uh, only, uh, excuse me, not clear. yes, I continue. I have not that. Uh, not clear. Audio is not clear. We are conducting my voice, the my, also. Vo voice is breaking. Okay. So then I think I think there is like a bit of disturbance during that here. And I would like to thank the speakers for taking time out of schedule and reminding in for the talk. I'd like to thank the audience who were patient enough that this the network was, you know, you, you all hung on. And uh, with this, we conclude the 11th webinar on Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo with the King Cobra and the Pelicula Biological Park. And I would uh, like to invite the Pelicula Biological to uh, host the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav activities till the end of this week. So do follow the website for, you know, and the other activities. And we will be in a species know your zoo webinar next week on uh, on the tiger and the Gorevara International Zoo. So do do connect to our YouTube channel again. And once again, thank you so much to the speaker for joining us. The technical pitch that we have faced. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arundhati. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you thank for inviting. Thank you.